Okay, time to get the show on the road. A very good morning to you all from a beautiful, sunny San Francisco. I hope it's a beautiful day wherever you are as well. I'm Simon Thompson, and today we have uh, an update for you on Meraki uh, product lines. We've got three product lines to cover today. Uh, the session should be not too long today, so we'll probably manage to get this into around 30 minutes or so. And I am joined today by my trusty colleague, Imran, who is quite excited at the prospect of answering all your questions. So as those come in to your mind, please do just tap away in the panel in WebEx, and we'll get those questions answered for you as quickly as we can. All right, so let's get straight into it. We're, our first product to discuss today is our MV security camera line. Uh, obviously been a very uh, strong product for us. It's actually been the fastest growing product in Meraki history since its launch in late September last year. Uh, so we've been very excited to see that. It's really been a very uh, interesting exercise to watch uh, what is a completely new product category for us, not, nothing to do with networking per se, uh, actually taking off so well. And I think that shows just how much demand there is in the market for a fresh approach to this kind of technology. And what we found as we've uh, rolled these out to our customers is that, of course, every MV deployment is unique. And we have lots of different use cases coming up. Uh, I've heard some really fascinating ones ranging right across the board, as you can see here, safety and security, process control, business insights, all of the uses to which we can put these cameras. Uh, but in the field, we've found some really interesting ones. We've heard of companies who've been able to save uh, significant amounts of money because they've been able to identify uh, manufacturing uh, issues on their shop floor using the cameras and uh, even heard about uh, cameras being in use by uh, farmers down in Australia uh, for uh, monitoring their sheep. Uh, so kind of fascinating use cases to which uh, people put Meraki technology. But overwhelmingly, what we've found is as we've gone out to more and more different types of customers, uh, we've had feedback that people need uh, really good long retention periods. Uh, when we launched this camera last year, we actually had groundbreaking brand new technology that had only been on the market for a couple of months, actually, uh, introducing a very effective way of capturing storage uh, directly on the camera itself very efficiently. And we were able to store uh, 20 days of continuous recorded footage uh, using the camera with the storage that was on board. And what we promised at the time we launched the camera was that that was the lowest figure that we would ever offer on the camera because, of course, over time we're able to innovate uh, new, smarter ways of, of get, making better use of the storage that we have available. And so that's what I'm here to talk to you about uh, this morning. That's the first thing we want to talk about, and that's two uh, pieces of technology that together we're describing as optimized retention for the security cameras. So the first of these is the most, probably the most important one of all, and that's motion-based retention. It's a very simple concept. If you're recording footage of, uh, let's say, a, a, a backyard of a, of a building and you want to be able to record what's going on in that space over time, you're probably only interested in recording when something actually happens during that period. And if you're pointing at a yard which is empty for much of the time, uh, then clearly all of that footage uh, is just completely wasted, and it's wasted space on storage. So we're using some intelligence to look for any kind of motion within the field of view of the camera, and we're going to start actually retaining that and stripping away everything else. So with motion-based retention, you're going to get 72 hours of continuous 24 by 7 recording, and that will be on a first-in, first-out basis. But then on top of that, you will get uh, intelligent trimming, which will just throw away any footage that does not have any motion in it. So this immediately helps us to significantly increase uh, the amount of storage that we have available. The other feature we're introducing is a very simple one, scheduled recording. So we're now going to provide you with the option of deciding when cameras actually do the recording. So it may be that you're only interested in recording from a security perspective overnight, for example. And so, of course, you can set this up to, to do that. So again, that's also going to be accumulatively adding to the potential uh, recording time for the camera. So what we built into the, into the management tool, and I'll show you the, the dashboard in a moment so you can see for yourself, is a smart tool which can estimate the approximate duration of retention the camera is able to achieve based on the settings that you have provided it. And obviously, over time, we build up analytics. You've probably seen this already. The MV is able to uh, make a note over time of where it has seen motion occurring. 
and build analytics around that so we can intelligently use that information to help us quite accurately predict the uh, retention period for the camera based on current settings. So what you're looking at here is a screen cap from the dashboard, and it is showing you not just a, and this isn't a fixed screen capture, this is actually a real estimate taken from this specific camera to indicate that you're going to be able to get 43 days of estimated retention with this camera. So that's obviously more than double the period that we were talking about previously, and certainly takes us well past the 30-day target, which seems to be the main hurdle uh, that's, uh, that's been in place for many of the customers we've spoken to. Let me switch across to the dashboard now, and I'll just show you this quickly. So here's a list of our cameras. Uh, so let's go and pick, uh, pick one of our cameras. We'll go for uh, stairs, and I'll just go into this camera here. So I'm sure you've all seen this by now, but we're looking now at a, a live video feed uh, for a camera that we have pointing at our stairwell. And so what I'm going to do now is just go straight across to settings. When I come into here, this is where I've previously come to set up things like the zoom and focus on the camera, the aperture and the rotation of that camera lens. And what I now go into is a new section called quality and retention. So straight away we can see that the current settings indicates that we'll be able to get 26 days of uh, retention on here. So we are using motion-based retention, but this is a uh, camera which sees quite a lot of, uh, of uh, retention time. But we can make some changes here just to play around with this. So if I switch to standard video quality rather than enhanced, I can now get 38 days based on these current settings. I also am showing here that I'm trying to record footage continuously, but I can come in here and I can create a schedule for the camera. And so here's one that we've created previously, uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. And you can see here that I can go in and set that schedule up and I can obviously move these very easily. I can make uh, add new ones if I want to. Very straightforward tool to use. And as we make these changes and apply them, we're going to again see that retention period change down here. This is very simple stuff I'm showing you here, but very effective in terms of getting that additional retention that our customers have been clamoring for. So we're very excited uh, to be announcing that today. Finally on the cameras, uh, we're also introducing another very simple but useful tool, and that is a timestamp which will now appear on any video which you choose to export. So if you do need to download some video footage, maybe to send to law enforcement for some reason, you're actually going to have a timestamp directly embedded onto that video. You don't have to worry about trying to uh, provide uh, information about the time of day that the video was recorded. So that's obviously a useful addition. And it's all these incremental small steps that we're able to make based on the feedback that you provide us. So do please keep that coming for MV. Uh, we think it's a really nice product as it stands, and I'm sure it's only going to get better from here. Okay, so that's it on the cameras, but on to now our second product of the morning, and that is our switching portfolio. So I'm sure I don't need to tell you if you're using Meraki switching that we already have uh, quite a good healthy range of options available in the marketplace going from the small 8 port 220 uh, switch right down there with its basic layer 2 connectivity and uh, basic, basic feature set uh, right through to our flagship which is really an enterprise grade uh, access switch and that is the MS350 line. That one includes things like uh, routing capability, uh, 10 gig SFP uplinks, physical stacking as well as virtual stacking. It also has M gig potential on there, so that's up to 2.5 gigs per second on a single Ethernet port over existing cabling, which really helps with uh, high-powered um, access points if you're trying to get maximum throughput to those. And of course, once you get up to those more expensive switches, you also have the options for uh, redundant and modular power. Now, as we look across the span from left to right here, you'll notice there's a little bit of a gap there. And what we've identified from looking at the market is because people buy a lot of these switches, they're obviously very keen to make sure that they refine the, the choice that they make as closely as possible to their own requirements. And that's useful to them both in terms of performance, but also, of course, in terms of the CapEx, the price that you're actually paying for those switches. So what we've determined is, well, as so we look at the, the rest of the market, uh, there is a little bit of a gap which we can go in and plug. Uh, and so we're looking to do that. We're introducing uh, two new product switches this fall, uh, so a little bit later this year. And uh, these are going to be, again, access layer switching, value priced, uh, with one gig uh, SFP uplinks. 
uh, instead of the 10 gig SFP uplinks you've seen on the more powerful switching. Uh, on the 210, you'll see that that also has uh, stacking support, uh, physical stacking support, and that is both with other 210 models, but also with the 225 series that we introduced uh, back in December of last year. So by adding these two additional families, uh, we're really starting to fill out the portfolio very nicely now. So we've provided a lot of different options and price points for our customers to consider. So here, are the, here is what the new range will look like by the time we get to fall of this year. Uh, starting with the 220, then we'll go through the uh, the 120 and 210 series, and then the 225 and 250 uh, established models with very good performance levels and 10 gig SFP uplinks, uh, and those will still be obviously in place as an option, and then uh, MS350 for the absolute flagship for uh, the very best you can get for edge switching from Meraki. Okay, so that's it on the switching. And so last up, we're going to head on to the uh, MX family. And we have uh, something quite exciting here. We haven't introduced anything new on MX for over a year now. So the product family was feeling a little bit left out. Uh, we have fixed that problem. So we've got something new to talk about today. Let's just do a quick recap, first of all. So one of the most successful features in the history of Meraki, and I think my personal favorite feature of all that we do, is Auto VPN. This is a tool which drastically simplifies the process of setting up site-to-site -site VPNs between your headquarters and your branches, or between your branches and your data centers, whatever it happens to be. And that technology really just eliminates many of the manual steps that previously are required for VPN. They also make it significantly easier to get past all of these NAT issues, which you often run into when you're getting site-to-site uh, -site VPN set up. So I'm sure that pretty much everybody on the call will have seen or uh, even deployed uh, auto VPN. And we, in fact, we have over 250,000 Meraki networks using that technology today. Uh, and so I'm sure you have plenty of familiarity with it. If not, uh, definitely, definitely recommend you take a good look at that if you are looking at creating site-to-site -site connections. Once we have Auto VPN in place, uh, we can then start to take advantage of the intelligent software-defined wide area networking that we've built into the Meraki platform. This enables us to make smart forwarding decisions on a packet-by-packet -packet basis around what uh, path we're going to use for a particular flow of traffic. So if we have uh, maybe a flow of uh, voice traffic from uh, site A to site B, and we suddenly get uh, degradation, we can flip across even mid-call on a voice over IP call uh, to an alternate backup. And that's based on continuously monitoring the quality and health of those connections that we have built site to site. So SD-WAN, again, a very significant part of our MX family. And one of the other interesting trends that we've been seeing is a gradual progression towards more and more cloud services. For us, of course, at Meraki, we've been doing cloud for over a decade now. We were one of the real early players in this market space, and we've built an entire business around a cloud-based approach. Uh, but we're now starting to see more and more companies choosing to migrate services uh, in their IT area between their data centers and a public cloud service. So there are a few of these. They have quite well-known names in the IT world, uh, things like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure. And so the market for this is growing very fast. We're looking at a compound annual growth rate of about 22% per year, leading up to about 2020, by which time the market will be over $200 billion. So that's a significant market. It tells us that this trend is going to continue, uh, and I'm sure many of you will also be uh, using cloud services uh, either in your personal lives or already in the workplace and starting to think about migrating there. So we want to take some of that Meraki simplicity and apply it into these public cloud services. So what we're announcing is uh, virtual MX for Amazon Web Services. I want to be very clear about that. This one is uh, our first launch into this space, and it's for the Amazon Web Services uh, offering, which is uh, the largest player in the marketplace as things stand today. The concept here is extremely simple. All we want to do is extend the benefits of AutoVPN, that great simplicity, into and inside the virtual private cloud that you can create through Amazon Web Services, giving you direct access to virtual services that you're running in the, uh, in the VPC. Uh, without having to worry about using uh, clunky VPN technology, which is still the reality for, for most customers today. Once we have that VPN established, uh, we can then 
uh, start to use the same kind of benefits around sort of SD WAN and so on uh, that we talk about on the physical uh, side of things. So if you are starting to migrate services, this is a really nice way of keeping it simple and seamless. This is all managed through the Meraki dashboard, but it is like a regular MX. It really is just purely for this feature. So it's really like a, a, a microcosm, if you like, of the standard capabilities of the MX, but focusing on the most important feature that you're going to need if you are trying to access services in a VPC. VPN performance is around 500 megabits per second. Uh, and the virtual appliance itself comes at no charge at all from Meraki. Uh, have a license uh, available in one, three, or five year uh, capabilities. And so you just determine what, uh, what license period you require. This is a bring your own license concept. So if you are familiar with uh, Amazon Web Services uh, licensing, typically Amazon gives uh, clients the option to charge and use either their own licensing or to, uh, to work through Amazon for hourly billing, uh, hourly licensing. So we're not uh, taking that latter approach. This will be standard Meraki uh, licensing approach as well. So this is going to enable you to connect to organizations which have either enterprise or advanced security licenses, so you don't have to worry about that particular issue there. And then just think about VMX really as a pass-through pass appliance. If, you're, if you've ever set up a, an MX as a one-armed concentrator, uh, for example, uh, then it's really very similar to that. It looks extremely similar to, to, uh, to that, in fact. Uh, what we're doing here really is just taking the benefits of AutoVPN and SD-WAN and we're extending them into AWS. So you now have the option to have uh, AWS operating either as a backup to your physical data center or vice versa, or maybe a supplement and starting to migrate services across to that, which is what we're typically seeing uh, customers do. The main thing from a Meraki perspective is that your experience is going to be the same. If you get degradation on the VPN you're using to connect to Amazon for any reason, it's going to automatically fail over the forwarding path to one of your physical data centers, for example. So very simple concept. Setting up VMX really is as easy as one, two, three. Here are the three steps you need to do that. You just really need to get a token which you can basically use to tie the two cloud services together. And what that then enables you to do is to start managing the VMX in the Meraki dashboard just as though it was a physical device. And then on the Amazon side, you simply configure a VMX 100, which is the, the model number that we're giving this one. And you choose the, uh, the instance type M4 large, which gives you a certain uh, level of performance, which is consistent with the, throughput, the VPN throughput that we're looking to provide our customers. And that's it. Our own IT department has put VMX to work already. So you can see on the left that there are some uh, Amazon services, uh, or sorry, services that are running within our own uh, VPC in Amazon Web Services. And so this, these are actual real screen caps showing the real services that we're migrating. And I think this is probably going to be quite typical. You're going to start moving relatively lightweight services, maybe logging, maybe file print services uh, across into that environment, build up confidence in uh, AWS before uh, maybe going a little bit more heavily into that journal direction. But the key point is we're going to make it easier for you to connect there. Just to recap again on the uh, licensing, this is uh, just a real nice little summary here. Uh, we have the VMX virtual license, uh, sorry, virtual appliance, which is free of charge, and then just the license to pay for one, three, or five year duration. And then on the Amazon Web Services side, you purchase an EC2 uh, uh, instance uh, called m4.large. And you can find obviously more details about that uh, on the AWS uh, website. Now, straight away, uh, and totally expected, uh, we have had a question that we've received many times since we uh, started talking about this uh, new product launch, and that's around Microsoft Azure. So we do recognize, of course, that Microsoft Azure is uh, a strong number two in this market space, uh, and coming up quickly, many IT shops using, Amazon, uh, using Microsoft uh, as a standard. So what we're doing is uh, we are going to be turning our attention to that platform uh, so that we can try and get that out as quickly as we can. I don't have a date to share with you today, uh, but I can promise you that we have heard that feedback very widely, uh, and so it will absolutely be top of mind for us as we look at the next step for VMX. All right, so time for a quick recap before we wrap things up. 
so again, with MV, we have now the motion-based retention that's uh, currently in late beta phase. We're almost done there, and then we'll be just about to launch that into GA uh, just in an, about another week or so from now. Uh, so that will be available to everybody. Uh, the Meraki switching, so we just want to make it clear that we have uh, new models coming a little bit later this year, uh, and new pricing just to make sure that we have a nice consistent flow from the 220 through to the 350 flagship at the edge of, the, uh, of that uh, network. And then last but not least, uh, Virtual MX. This is uh, ready to go, so you can get set up for uh, trials, and you can, uh, you can start to get an order in place uh, for VMX if this looks like a direction you would like to take things. And obviously, there's some more detail about all of these uh, on our website if you'd like to have a look uh, in a bit more detail. So that was a pretty efficient run through. Let's have a look and see uh, any of the questions that have come in, because uh, that's our last slide for the presentation today. And I'll see if we've got anything that we can share with you all. Obviously, if you have any last minute questions, please do put them into the Q&A panel right now. So great to see that uh, we've got people asking about products that we haven't talked about today. Uh, so I can assure you that uh, there's ongoing uh, feature improvements occurring right across all of our platforms. Uh, phone is mentioned specifically here. We did actually announce some new features there. The best place to go to keep up to date with the, the feature and product announcements that we make is our blog. That's really our mouthpiece. So if you haven't already subscribed there, do please go along to meraki.com forward slash blog. And right there, there's a subscribe button you can click. Uh, and then you'll get these updates to your inbox. So you're always up to date with the latest from Meraki. Okay, I'm just scanning down the list of questions. Obviously, we're focused on the launches today, so uh, I won't be answering any of the other questions that are coming in about other issues. Uh, but we can take those offline, of course. Yes, there's a great question here around uh, motion analytics. That is going to work for the time period that you're actually uh, capturing the video for. So if you are uh, seeing analytics, bear in mind that the camera is always operational and it is always capturing those analytics around whether there's any motion or not. So the, there, there'll be no impact at all to the way in which we build up the analytics that you've seen. So in terms of, for example, the heat map that I'm sure you have already seen on the cameras. Okay, good healthy number of questions here, thank you. Um, obviously quite a few repeated questions here. Uh, question here about private clouds, that's not an option from Meraki, it's not a marketplace that we operate in. So uh, as things stand, we have uh, only a public cloud offerings and we're interested in supporting the other public cloud offerings that we're seeing uh, customers moving to increasingly. So that's really a trend that we're seeing over time uh, and it's obviously one that we want to be a part of. Some interesting feature suggestions here, uh, things like zones on MV. Don't forget that there is that Make-A-Wish box on the dashboard where you can uh, give us that feedback. That really is the most effective way to communicate back to our engineering team. Uh, they have this up on a big screen in the engineering area, so these all get seen and captured. Yeah, so good question here. Just to, uh, just to reconfirm, can the virtual MX be considered a redundancy solution uh, if you just have one physical MX uh, in each building on a campus? So yes, it absolutely can. And so if you are providing uh, backup services operating in AWS, virtual MX will enable you to use that as a, as a backup option. So you can uh, fail over from one to the other, just as you would with a regular physical MX. Uh, good question here. Can we use the uh, the Meraki uh, VMX to create connections between AWS VPCs? So the answer to that is yes, you can do that. Uh, so we should be able to find details for how to do this in our documentation. That's probably where the most detail about v, uh, VMX exists. 
So if you go to documentation.meraki.com, search on BMX, you'll uh, find all the details you need there. Uh, just to clarify, VMX uh, cannot be used as a NAT gateway, so it doesn't operate like a regular firewall. So the UTM functionality built into MX uh, physical boxes is not available on VMX. This is really uh, better to think of it as a, a pass-through appliance. So I'm sure you've seen if you go into MX, uh, you actually have the option at early setup to determine whether the box is set up in NAT mode or in what we call concentrator mode. Uh, this is a concentrator mode, effectively, and so that does cut down the number of security services that are available, which is why uh, you're still going to need to provide uh, security services on the uh, Amazon side of things. To clarify around licensing, there's just one license type for uh, VMX. Uh, so I'm sure that you're aware that we have on the physical MXs, we have uh, the enterprise license and the advanced security license. With the standard license for VMX100, you're going to be able to integrate that into organizations that have either uh, advanced security physical MXs or enterprise physical MXs. That will make sense if you've used those technologies. If it didn't make any sense, don't worry. Uh, all will become clear as you, uh, as you move into these products. Still continuing down the questions. Uh, question here around uh, switch pricing. So we are adjusting pricing on the 225 and 250 really to make space so that we have a nice consistent uh, flow between uh, the, the end, if you like, the low end of the market and the, the higher end of the market for those access layer switches. So the, the pricing change does not apply right across the board, it is purely to the 225 and 250. Uh, there's a question here about BGP on MX. That is something that we're in the process of developing. Uh, so we're working on that actively right now. Uh, I'm happy to talk to you about that because we have it in beta already. So if you are interested in trying BGP on the MX, please do reach out to Meraki Support and we'll try and get you set up as soon as we can. Question about storage of video on, MX, on MV. So we have the, uh, the storage actually on the camera itself. If you need to export, archive that video for any reason, what you'll need to do is export the video uh, that's captured. And obviously with motion-based retention, that's going to be much more efficient as a process than uh, it was previously. You don't need to save all of that uh, useless footage. And so it's going to be a, a, a better way to, to keep your stored video. A uh, question here about whether you can manage uh, Meraki devices through Prime. Interesting. So the answer to that question is uh, a, a qualified yes. Uh, with Prime, obviously that's a tool which uh, attempts to manage a very large number of uh, traditional Cisco platforms. Uh, we are able to monitor Meraki devices through Cisco Prime. So there is actually a Meraki device pack for Cisco Prime uh, that you can install on that platform. Uh, if you do need to make modifications, then you can simply click on the device in Prime, and that will then basically just hot link you across to the Meraki dashboard so you can make those config changes. Uh, great question here about uh, security levels on the MS110 and 210. Uh, sorry, 120 and 210. It's a bit of a tongue twister, that one. Um, so there is a very basic uh, access control uh, uh, access control list based firewall uh, built into those switches. If you do need to get into more serious uh, protection, and uh, the questioner here is specifically asked about malware and adware, you're going to need to look at the MX platform. That's really its job in life. It's a unified threat management box designed specifically to help you uh, protect uh, your environment much more effectively. And so things like, for example, the WannaCry uh, story, which I'm sure we've all heard about. Uh, that was unleashed on the internet last Friday. Uh, MX users are protected from that uh, thanks to the integration of our intrusion detection and prevention technology, which is able to recognize the signature of that particular outbreak. 
Uh, just to, qual uh, to clarify, again, based on a question here, the 120 series does not have uh, layer three uh, capabilities. It's just only uh, a simple layer two switch. Uh, once you get into 210, then you have the option for uh, static routing on there so that you can start to use that technology if you use it. Yeah, so another question about another platform, Google Cloud Platform, again, one that we're aware of. Uh, as with many things that we do integrating into existing public services, we'll need to uh, look into the ways in which we can actually integrate. So we managed to do that successfully with Amazon. Uh, we'll certainly be looking at uh, Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform, I think, is number three as player right now in this space, but growing quickly. And so we can be sure that uh, if there is a way to do it, it will be available from Meraki at some point. So there's a great comment come in here, which is essentially uh, saying that, that uh, it's good news for having these additional switch choices because some of these remote offices uh, just simply don't need uh, the 10 gig powerful uplinks or even uplinks at all. Uh, and so that really is sensible. It just helps to ensure that if you're buying a large number of these switches, you're getting the best possible value for money. Your questions are coming in almost as fast as I can answer them, which is great. Uh, so I'll keep on going down the list here. Question about whether VMX can support a site with over 100 users. Yes, absolutely. We don't see any issues at all with scaling there. Uh, remember that the, the, the figure to keep in mind is the throughput on the VPN for that device. Uh, so thanks to the choice of uh, EC2 instance type uh, there, we are able to predict a VPN throughput of 500 megabits per second, which is very healthy uh, for a data center service. Question about what happens if the VMX license expires. It's the same story as with any other uh, Meraki device. The license is part of the package for Meraki. It gives you access to our support team. It gives you 24 by 7 access. It gives you uh, warranty, obviously, and it also gives you free uh, updates. So, for example, uh, customers running the MV, they're getting this very powerful new motion-based retention feature, absolutely free of charge, uh, because it's included as part of their license, that ongoing development. So. Uh, if the license expires, the equipment will cease to forward traffic because that is part of our business model. Question here about uh, whether this is being recorded. Yes, it is. Uh, so we will be posting a uh, one of these webinars online, uh, probably on our YouTube channel. I think it's the most likely place where that will appear. Uh, so you can go back and recap on this if you'd like to. A uh, question about uh, HSRP, which is a protocol very similar to VRRP, uh, available on, uh, is, is that going to be available on 120 and 210? I would have to double check that, but I don't think so, because these are not uh, designed to be operating as uh, layer three switches. That's a, a layer three kind of feature, so you're more likely to see that's possible it's on the 210, but I would have to double check. question about uh, the ratings on the camera. So this is uh, rated for IP66 for weather protection and IK10 for industrial environments. Uh, so pretty good coverage there. We do have an outdoor model on the MV series, the MV71. It has a little heater built into it as well to make sure you don't get any fogging on the, on the camera lens. Uh, so you're well covered there.
So a question here, what's the difference between MS-210 and 225? The clear, um, simple difference is uh, the uplink performance. So you're going to see uh, slightly better performance on MS-225 generally, uh, but for uplink throughput, you've got a 10 gig SFP plus option, uh, which does command a little bit of a price premium in the market compared to the standard one gig interface. This is quite funny. Somebody uh, says that they're confessing that they joined late and asking if anybody's already asked whether VMX will be available on Azure. I can assure you that about 50 people have asked us whether uh, VMX will be available on Azure. So as I said earlier, we have heard that message very loud and clear. And uh, I can assure you that uh, our team will be turning their attention to that platform as quickly as they possibly can. Okay, looks like we're through all of the questions now. They're starting to get kind of repetitious now, which is understandable. Uh, so I'd like to thank you very much indeed for joining us uh, on today's session. I hope you found it a useful update, continuing innovation at Meraki uh, and providing more options for our customers as well. Uh, so from Imran and myself, I'd like to wish you a very enjoyable rest of your day. And we do look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.